state, my favorite. Welcome to everybody. Today's topic is exciting for me because the intro is very simple. Why do you break down your health care plan? Because you're running a health care business whether you want to or not. Boom. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm John Clay, your chief strategist and show host, Johnny Dollar. We're going to break down that almighty dollar today and talk a little bit about how we make things happen in our plan design and strategies here at Better Source Benefits. Quick shout out to our sponsor, none other than today's show sponsored by Better Source Benefits, Benefits Options Solutions. Check us out at www.bettersourcebenefits.com. So last week you learned about how to sell the brand inside your business to make sure that you're congruent with what you're promoting on the outside of your company and that it's being expected and, and, and communicated with inside your own company and your organization. Well, that's that's uh, along the same lines of what we're talking about today, because, you know, how many times have you heard we're all about our employees or we're all about, you know, the culture? We've talked about that in previous shows about culture, uh, building trust, things of that nature and uh, employee retention, certainly right on the top of every C-suite's list because we're having uh, massive uh, people looking for a way out, a new job. OK, they're active in the market and, you know, we're interviewing 10 to get one uh, opportunity. And sometimes we're interviewing 10 or calling 10 just to get one interview. How about that? So we're seeing all kinds of different and new trends in the employee world and the employment world. Well, guess what? We're still seeing new trends in the health plan world as well. So here's the deal. We're, this week, we're breaking down your health plan, and we're going to talk about how whether you have, if you have a, a group health plan in your organization, no matter how it's structured, fully insured, self-funded, uh, med shares, it doesn't matter because you're, chances are you're sending a ton of money out to other businesses to provide the health care for your employees and their families. Uh, how many people have had to reduce benefits over time to uh, no longer be able to extend to their families because it's just too expensive? So this broad budget category is likely assigned to compensation benefits expense, uh, subgroup of compensation benefits expense, right? And as we go through today, we're going to dissect this business expense into meaningful categories. You know, our followers know, if you've watched our show, that uh, the industry trend is, is moving towards self-funding versus fully insuring your health plan. And to give you an idea from our own clientele how this is working, five years ago, among our better source clients, probably 8% were self-funded. Today, they're 36, maybe 50% of our clients are now self-funded. And our firm's clientele is fairly representative of small and mid-sized businesses from 20 to 2,000 employees located in the Mid-South region across multiple industries. So that's a pretty strong business trend towards self-insured. And, uh, you know, that's what 80% of all employers do in that 250 lives and above. So think about that. They've been doing this for a long time with large groups, 250 and above. We're just delivering those types of solutions and strategies into the smaller market. So the real title of my presentation is, could be, let's put it that way. The real title could be, you're running a healthcare business, whether you like it or not. And the great news is, Listen closely, my CEO, CFO, and HR friends. You too may deliver world class health care to your employees at half the cost. Now, think about this from an entrepreneurship standpoint. For people serving as business leaders, 
what got you into business to start with? You provided a different value proposition than any of your competitors. You did it better. You did it faster. You did it for less money. You did it for a value proposition that everybody could could reach out and say, this is the person or persons or the company, the organization that can deliver for that for us on that particular service or product. Well, guess what? And we've talked about this in prior streams on, on our show here. If you implement a value agenda, okay, when it comes to a group health plan, that has some pretty good practical steps to deliver that promise of financial security and trust. We talked about a trust measurement too for employees of an organization. So we're all trying to make these deposits in the trust tree, if you will, of an organization so that we have we, we get it right, whether it's messaging, whether it's products or services, or our congruence with our marketing outside or inside the company. We all want everybody on the same page, and we all want to be doing what we promise that we'll do uh, when we get into business, when we have just the cocktail napkin concept and we've blown it into this fantastic uh, being, if you will, uh, of a company. So for most organizations, back to the, the medical plan, most organizations, the cost has become the second or third highest line item in the budget and various health options within the money that you spend for your plan. Uh, you have two kinds of expenses. You've got fixed and you've got variable expenses. Fixed costs, what you're gonna find for uh, real examples of how this thing breaks down. If you have around 50 employees in a company and you have a half a million dollar health care expense, you probably have between 100 or 200 employees and your internal health care business is an organization at, I don't know, anywhere from 1.9 to 2.2 million. How about that? That's a business inside a business. I don't care who you are. And you're looking for a manager to manage that that chunk of money. And when you get into the jumbo cases at 650 to 2,500, you've got many, many millions you're dealing with on an annualized basis. But here on this slide, you see the, the percentage of fixed expenses going down as the employee size grows. So from the 53 person company, you're at 49% of the total spend all the way up to 12% for the jumbo company at 2,500 employees. Well, look out. You want to hire somebody that can manage that middle tier, which is the health claims expense. Let's put that slide back up just a minute. Let's talk about that. We're gonna to try to manage the health claims and the variable expense. That's where you hire someone like John Clay. I call myself Johnny Dollar today. You know, Johnny Dollar, the, the action-packed expense account is uh, what everybody's, their, their margin is found in those variable costs. When you're talking about our friends in the large employer uh, space, they tend to migrate to the BUCAs. What are they? Blue Cross, United, Cigna, Aetna, Humana. And those variable costs many times are not well managed by those BUCA partners. So let's get back to the real meat of the matter. The admin expense is just the tip of the iceberg. And again, when you get into managing that variable expense, okay, let's go ahead and take that down. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what has happened is you have, and I got to check my notes here. You know, you, you've got someone in your company that you want to have managing this business unit. All right. They want to have the skills, experience, and expertise to 
match the magnitude of the investment that you make in a health plan. And they also have some dramatic responsibilities from ERISA with, uh, ter in terms of fiduciary responsibility to, to manage that healthcare plan in the best interest of the plan and its members. So, wow, you know, that's some pretty heavy stuff. So do you trust someone that works for another company who is paid by another company to manage that cost for you? Or do you, you know, do you basically transfer that risk? No, you can't transfer the risk, but you tend to transfer the responsibility to a broker and you choose those things, what, with a spreadsheet, a good looking spreadsheet? Buddy, 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 that's no way to roll because today, we have the tools, we have the strategies, and we can take on these, these variable costs and we can meet them head on and we can manage them better. You know, research tells us that physical and emotional well being is the underlying expense that drives the need for this funding mechanism in the first place. And when you get to that comfort level, okay, P.T. Barnum said, comfort is the enemy of progress. So what we've been used to and what the market has trained us to do is to simply allow uh, year over year over year, it's uh, the parable of the, the boiling frog. You know, who, uh, who remembers the little kid's story about the, the, the boiling frog? You never put frogs into the pot when it's boiling. You put them in there and then you just raise the temperature slowly, slowly, slowly until their goose is cooked, so to speak. Well, that's what many of us have done with our medical plans, right? The boiling frog. We're sitting there cooked and we don't even know it. We're hemorrhaging cash. We've seen huge sums of money go out the door with nothing to show for it. You don't even get a report. You don't get an accounting. You don't get anything other than a thank you very much. And here's your here's your new deal. And it's only what it was starting out at 28 percent. And we got it negotiated down to 20. Because you had a bad year and that's what you, had, you just have to take their their word for it because you had a bad year. Oh, Lordy, that is no way to go, people. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so, you know, there's um, how could I ever let, let's let's ask a hypothetical. OK, how could you ever be able to answer an inquiry from the owner of your company? If you're say you're the CFO or the chief human resources officer. You've got a $2.2 million budget on your medical plan and you sit into the boardroom and you're, you're answering questions about the performance of your plan. All right. We know what we spend down to two and three decimal places for bolts and nuts and other hardware, for example, in a manufacturing environment, what you spend on welding wire or steel or concrete or anything else in the uh, construction industry, rock, gravel, pavement, blacktop, uh, fuel. We know down to the penny and sometimes to two and three decimal points what we're spending on everything that we build up into our product mix. On our bill of materials, we all know how this thing builds out, but we have to put in this fluid number called employee cost labor and the labor component as we break down has this health insurance component which is a wild card and many times since we lack transparency in the majority of the plans that are sold we don't know what we're paying for a new knee we don't know what we're paying for an mri we don't know what we're paying for an office visit or a prescription drug but yet we do all of this Calculating, and I've seen a, fr a friend of mine used to <laughs> do an estimate in the construction business, and I would see rolls and rolls and rolls of, of tape where he was on the adding machine putting his bid together to get it before the deadline so he could put it all bundled up and packaged and present it for a letting. 
and hope to be the low bid. Well, you don't have the low bid here. You've got a less bad bid or a less bad renewal year over year because the spreadsheet is the, the benchmark. It tells you what you've got. And it's a fantastic looking piece of, of, of information, but it tells you nothing. It tells you nothing about where your money's going, who it's going for, or what you're paying for. It's, it's crazy, but it's the best business model that's ever been built. I'll just say it. But as I've said before, and I will say again, according to Jeff Bezos, their margin is your opportunity. So that's, that's the, the transparency component that we're focusing on in these new custom plans. And I call them custom plans because that's what they are. We, we've always felt like one size fits one. And if you look at the continuum of control and retention of risk, um, you can be over here on one side being very, very conservative, okay, just writing it off to a business expense and writing the check, or you can be on the other end of the spectrum where Walmart, Boeing, or the Commonwealth of Virginia have a million or a quarter of a million color covered lives, and they offer a lot of insight on what's going on with their plan due to the predictability that comes with the law of large numbers, while you have con tremendous control and access to data. So there you have it. You've got, don't worry, don't bother me, kid. You know, get away from me, kid, you bother me. Write to check. And then you've got a total data analysis that allows you to foresee emergent claims, manage those, and deliver the best possible outcomes for your employees and their family members. How strong is that in terms of a recruitment and retention policy? How strong is that in keeping with your messaging within your company on what you deliver to clients and customers as well as to employees? And how important is it to you as an entrepreneur to take that next step and be the value play, the implementing that value agenda for your business so that you move your health insurance expense from a commodity buy, which is a, what we called before an operating expense, OPEX, to a capital expense, a CAPEX, where you have scrutiny, active management, a return on investment, performance metrics that you see on a regular basis. It's, it's, it's crazy what people just set and forget when it comes to a medical plan. So that's that's really the breakdown on your healthcare plan. You know, you have different bundled concepts that we we can introduce to you. We'd love to share the the idea of imaging at a cost that's below the normal rate where we can pay a fixed amount for an MRI or a CAT scan or a CT scan and it's no cost to our employee because we've got a negotiated price ahead of time and boom, we know exactly what it's going to be. And let me tell you folks, here's our chart. Medicare pays $105 for a CT scan. It pays $214 for an MRI. And then on an arthroscopic rotator cuff re repair, $5,294. Look what your PPO is paying for that. The PPO price, ridiculous. And at the end of the day, they've got to juice up those prices just so they can come back and give a 50% discount off of those prices. So it, at uh, a $1,502, they, they get a discount of down to $751. Wow, that goes against your deductible, right? Of two thousand or three thousand dollars. MRI, same thing, twenty eight hundred ninety five dollars. Wow, that's only fourteen hundred dollars to your deductible. Where are you going to come up with that money? And then don't even get me started on the rotator cuff. So at the end of the day, 
you've got a bundled cash price in this example with our partner Green Imaging, fixed amount $425, boom. And that's still four times Medicare pricing. The MRI is $700, three times Medicare pricing. Can a provider make it on three times Medicare? We would certainly hope so. But do they have to charge 14 times to get seven? Makes no sense to me, but thanks to the Affordable Care Act, we have the data now that shows us what these charges are, what these services cost, what they uh, are billed at. And at the end of the day, we can say, all right, two, four, six, eight, let's renegotiate the cost of these services. Very impressive stuff and fun all of a sudden because you know that you're getting a better deal and who doesn't like to get a better deal on anything, whether it's a top shelf five course meal from a five star restaurant. If you could get a, a, a BMW for a, a price that's well below, you know, a premium car for an economy car price, I don't care. You know, what we've known is that not only do you have these opportunities in the medical field, but you also have these same savings opportunities in the prescription side. And I think we have uh, a slide for that, do we? Well, here's the uh, prescription drug spend. This is the green line in the top of this slide. Look at what has happened to the prescription drugs. They've gone crazy. And the utilization is up right alongside the spending. And this is thanks to the direct to consumer advertising that you see on TV, radio, print, any kind of media. It's gone crazy because they are bringing more and more new drugs to the market and they're bringing them with very similar components to what's already on the market, or they're going back to the well on an old drug and rolling it back out. So you've got biologics that are new, biosimilars that are congruent with the biologics, and then you've got some of those other drugs that have been rolled off the shelf from long ago, and they are now actually bring, bringing uh, new revenue streams back to the manufacturers it's it's unbelievable. When you get into a prescription drug program, though, here's the thing. Higher quality that can go with lower cost pharmacy carve outs and pharmacy benefit managers. Just think about any whoever's got an ID card with your medical plan. You've got a pharmacy program on it that tells you who's handling your pharmacy piece. We have a new breed of pharmacy benefit managers that actually cut the middleman out and actually deliver the cost of these prescription drugs without so much fat baked into them. I mean, we've identified over 32 different hidden cash flows in some of these contracts. It is nuts. So we're, we're moving in the right direction to help manage and break down your health care plan so that you can see visibly going forward on a month by month basis, how you can control those costs and how you can absolutely take, make a difference in what you're spending by lowering the cost, improving the quality and restoring trust, financial security and performance for your company with just a stroke of the pen, you know, Shout out to John Clay, Johnny Dollar today. We're happy to help. And if you want to, by all means, go to www.bettersourcebenefits.com. Click on the Get Started link. And we can set up an appointment and we'll talk about the three ways that we can help you. We can do a single consulting agreement. We can do a broker of record, or we can offer a bolt-on solution that will deliver the value that you're looking for without any disruption. You don't have to make big changes. You just have to think a little smarter. So that's it for today. How to dissect your health plan. 
Uh, I'm John Clay, your show host and chief strategy guide. We're, we're, we're shout out to our partner, Dave Chase at the Health Rosetta, restoring uh, the CEO's guide to restoring the American dream. If you'd like to know more about the Health Rosetta movement and restoring uh, your American dream, reach out to me and I'm happy to send you a copy of Dave's book, The CEO's Guide to Restoring the American Dream. So that's it. There'll be no show next week. I'll be out on a conference. So tune in two weeks from today, same time, same channel on Better Source Benefits, sponsored benefits with John Clay. Hope to see you soon.